Well, uh, bikes are on the racetrack and form their grid, and so it's time for us to get down to that third member of our broadcast team. Hannah, it's your show now. Take it away. I'm down here on the grid with Bryce Prince. Bryce, yesterday you were in a battle for a podium spot until you made a mistake. Tell everyone about what happened. Uh, yeah, you know, I was having a good battle with Richie, and uh, going down the back straight, I went for a tear-off and unfortunately hit my kill switch. Uh, made me feel like a newbie out there. Never done that in my life, and, you know, I got passed by a bunch of people, and it really messed up my groove and kind of wasted my tire trying to get caught back up to them. Uh, we have a little bit of different plan today. Uh, just get off to a good start and be more consistent and run with the guys, and my whole 60 KWR Yamaha team is giving me an awesome bike, and I really let them down yesterday. And uh, I'm going to show them, you know, repay them today and try to get up there on the box. So. Thank you, Brace. Best of luck. Jason, you called it. I mean, in the middle of the race, I do have to give you credit for it because you, you <laughs> called it. We saw the tear off. You thought there was a problem. I, I think you may have said kill switch. Well, um, it happens, and uh, this is probably something Bryce has never done before. He'll never do it again. Yeah. Two good friends before this race. That's J.D. Beach and Hayden Gillum, the two that set sail on the rest of this field, and everyone looking for an answer for those two racers. I mentioned it at the top of the show, they are definitely friends off the track, but when the visor goes down, it's all business for Hayden Gillum and J.D. Beach. Let's get back down to Hannah. I'm here with Corey West. Corey, you were really close to a podium finish yesterday as well. What is your hope for the rest of the season? Would you like to continue racing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're sitting third in the championship right now, so uh, I'm just taking it race by race. The uh, Team M4 X-Star Suzuki has been treating me really well, and uh, I want to get back up on that podium before uh, I'm all said and done, I guess. All right. Thank you, Corey. Best of luck. Yeah, thank you. Jason, we talked about it. That's really going to be the challenge for the Ulrich, the, the folks who own that yeah. team, M4 X-Star Suzuki. Definitely, if Valentin DeBees gets cleared to come back, they want him back because the guy is unbelievable. But now you have an amazing fill-in rider, Corey West, and they might have to start digging deep for more budget. Those, those guys always find a way to find the right guy, too, and it's great because Corey did, is the guy. And uh, we're going to get a look here at VIR at our track map. Uh, big, long front straightaway. Turn 14 is wide open, little kink right, at, right before the start line. Down into turn one where we saw a lot of action, a lot of passing going down through there. Turns two, three, four. A little technical, but when we get into the, like the little S section, five, six, seven, it really determines, going through five and six determines how well you're going to get down that next straightaway into seven. We're going to go across the top of the ridge there, eight, nine, all the way through into turn 10. Saw some action up in turn 10 as well. And then it drops really severely downhill. Fast left-hander, fast right-hander coming onto the front straightaway. And, uh, you know, the, we, we've seen it before where that opening lap, that drafting down the front straightaway can draw a few people into turn one, get them in there a little bit fast, and it's very easy to make mistakes. This racetrack abusing the right side with those eight right-hand corners. So I'm not making the comment that it does definitely abuse and work the right side of the tire. But the sun is out, different from what we had here yesterday with overcast skies. And the representatives from Dunlop telling me that they like the heat in the racetrack, that they definitely think that the tire is going to go longer in terms of its peak performance and not drop off as quickly. Let's take a look at the starting grid for this Super Sport race number two here in the Moto America Championship. It is Hayden Gillum, J.D. Beach, and Nick McFadden in all Kentucky front row. Bryce Prince, who we talked to, Richie Escalante off his podium, is in fifth spot, and Anthony Maziato rounding out row number two. Miles Thornton, Braden Nort, Corey West start off with row three there. Michael Gilbert, JC Camacho, and Jason Aguilar coming all the way from row four. And Jason put himself right in the hunt yesterday for that podium position. Lucas Silva, Ashton Yates, Benjamin Smith, our KTM 390 Cup champion on row five, row six. Max Angles, Joe Giannato, and Daytona Anderson. Back to row seven, Greg, we got Aaron Graham, Fernando Silva, Bailey Cox. Row eight, Jarrett Nassani, Nassasny, uh, Ryan Christians, Christian, and uh, Kinsra Naylor. And then Timothy Wilson, Jeremy Simmons, and Gillis Glidewell rounding out row number nine as we have a full complement of racers getting ready to fire those motorcycles up and get out on their warm-up lap. 27 riders in total on the grid for this race. And it's about this guy right here. What has the crew done overnight to make him more comfortable? Hayden Gillum. Yeah, and that's why, we, that's why it's so cool. When we went to the two race formats, you know, a, a bunch of years back, and you could go into uh, an evening with your crew chief and not just do dinner and all that, but you could really talk about what you would want to change and then see if the direction you went is the right way. You get to test it first thing tomorrow. I think when you look at this track, Greg, I, I really studied it the last couple of days. These first two guys are making such a big 
uh, they're, they're creating such big gaps in the first sector, which really is from the start-finish line. It's a long sector from start-finish line all the way through uh, turn six on their way down that next straightaway to turn seven. The front two guys are a second or more quicker. So it's all this little section here that uh, JD and Hayden have really been able to stretch out their uh, their advantage on everyone else. I think that that if somebody like Maziato or Bryce Prince or any of those guys can get off the line with those two and just try to get drawn in with them that first lap or so uh, and try to go with them, a lot of times when you're when you're getting closer and closer to the front guys, you just need to see that speed. And if you can see it, then you can start trying to relate to it and then build build a race pace around that. And uh, that's what it's going to take because most of the races that we see, JD and Hayden get off to the best starts as well. I'm talking to JD Beach's crew chief on the Monster Energy Yamaha Extended Services Yamaloop Graves Yamaha team, John Ethel. We talked about what was the goal this morning in the in the short warm up session that we had earlier on in the day, and it was. Giving J.D. Beach some more front-end feel, Jason, they felt like it wasn't just the feel of the front-end. When J.D. was making some transitions, he had a couple moments where the front-end would snap on him violently. So they were just trying to, even though J.D. won that race by 2.2 seconds, had the fastest lap of the race, you know, the work never ends for J.D. and his new team for 2018. And so we'll see if they nailed that one. I know Hayden Gillum and his Ridiculous Racing Yamaha crew were working on him smoothing out. They also did a quick engine swap as the engines have certain amount of time, miles on yep. them, kilometers if you will. And so it was time to swap that motor out. So Hayden Gillum also has a freshie yeah. on his hands in terms of a motor. And so. even though JD, you know, he's won here before, he's done things, they're looking at times from past years and last year specifically when he was chasing Garrett. And, you know, I'm sure he's, he's looking at what the times are from last year to this year. When you get new crew chiefs and stuff, you get some new creative maybe ideas, some thoughts. Obviously, they've never gone too far off where they need to be on that bike that JD's on, but it gives you some new thoughts and some new ideas. So we'll see if Hayden, though, if he can pick it up today. Yesterday, he didn't get a very good start. Made, his, made it a little bit hard for him. I'm sure he's feeling like he'd like to get out in front of JD today right off the bat rather than vice versa. And all Kentucky front row as Hayden Gillum, J.D. Beach, and Nick McFadden try to lead this field into turn number one. It's time for race number two, super sport action from VIR. And we're going, and what a start from J.D. Beach again. Nick McFadden also got a good good start on that M4 Med H Suzuki. Bryce Prince as well is going to stick his nose in there and be up to uh, brighten that battle for third and fourth. It's a tricky turn one here. It gets really narrow down there. Great to see all of our field make it through, but Here's what happened yesterday, but see Hayden makes quick work of Nick McFadden as they go into turn three. He did the same yesterday, but he came from further back. So now if, if Nick can somehow just try to get through this first segment with those guys and see kind of what that pace really is, uh, that, that, you know, that'll draw him along. But I could see uh, Miles Thornton got a great start there too. He's probably running back in about eight. So, ooh, big wobble for oh, Braden Ort. Wow. Big, big moment for Braden Ort as they head down on that back straightaway. That might have been enough to get Miles up another spot. That was the number 30 bike. It's red and white motorcycle, tuned racing. Number 30, Ort, back there in the field out of Alberta, Canada. There's Richie Escalante on that silver motorcycle. Escalante, of course, holding on to a podium finish yesterday on the Quicksilver Lexan Moto Hudson motorcycles, Yamaha R6. So J.D. Beach and Hayden Gillum already starting to work their way away from this field. Yeah, and you can just see that it's just that, that really that first sector, they'd already started to pull out that gap. And I talked to Nick this morning. He said he just lost a little bit of tire there towards the end of the race yesterday. We talked a little bit about the dynamics of what the Suzuki compared to the Yamaha, what he sees when he's on track, and uh, how short he has to gear that bike. And uh, we had a little discussion about that as Bryce Prince now tries to make a move. Bryce Prince, two years ago, won the 600 Superstock Championship. He's very comfortable on an R6. He's been doing some club races. Nick McFadden turns it back up underneath him. But Bryce has been racing out in California and uh, getting some testing time on that bike that he built. And uh, just r real late in the, the year, uh, gets hooked up with Kyle Wyman. Now he's finding himself in third and wanting to go with those two guys. And they've been able to open up that gap on Hayden. And he's also on an even quicker lap right now and opened up so much time, half a second in the first sector, another tenth of a second. So he's pulled six tenths in the first two segments, has J.D. Beach. This is going to be a ripping lap. So 26-2, Greg, fastest lap of the weekend that we have seen um, on 600. So, you know, that's, that's, the, that's experience level. That's that difference. And you can see now this battle for third starting to heat up. Corey West has moved himself up into fifth place. 
These guys are all doing 28s. 26-9 for Gillum, 28s for the rest of the field. As of right now, Miles Thornton gets thrown up out of the seat but saves it coming out of turn one, trying not to lose touch with those guys. A good look at the M4 X-Star Suzuki rider Corey West. Now, Corey, in talking with him, Jason, I had a chance to speak with him this morning as well. You know, Corey has been on a different brand of motorcycle tire for years and years that has a, creates a much different front feel than the Dunlop tire. And when he went to the race yesterday, he told his crew, guys, be patient. I'm going to feel this tire out. And it just seems to work better for him when there's less fuel load and the tire starts to get some wear. So if you're looking, oh, somebody went That's off. Braden off Braden. again, yep. a little bit but, wide. But if you look at that rider, Corey West, I think he's, he's in a much better position this early on in the, in the race. And this is exactly where he wants to be, as he told Hannah. You know, it's all about the podium for him at this point. I think most people know in this field that with J.D. Beach and Haven Gillen, the pace they've had on this weekend, that really the battle's for that final rostrum spot. you got to remember that there's somebody like Corey who raced for so many years and then literally probably thought, well, I'm never really going to get a chance again. So he's been racing once a year, and can't stress it enough. It's Now he's kind of come back. He's getting all those same feelings back, but getting used to new everything, though, again, is he's getting drafted down the front straightaway right now by Richie Escalante. But there's a lot of things that are just going to be coming back to Corey nice and slow. Let's see if he can do anything. He's going to outbreak him. So that's the trust in the turn one that's it. on that front tire that you're talking about. And he has that ability. We saw it in him yesterday being able to do that. But Corey, all these guys have been racing for the last three, four, five years. Corey's been sitting on a couch watching, even even if he's been watching. Yeah. I don't know if he has been or not. But yeah. you know, I mean, now, he's been riding a motorcycle. He yep. actually has a tour group. And it's all slow pace, off-road type stuff. Correct. Nothing at this speed. and. You know, the brain starts to settle into a certain pace. There's no question about it. Does a lot with Colin Edwards boot camp, uh, yep. you know, as well. So he's, he's not, like, not been on a bike, but it's a different mode when you got to throw yourself into race mode. And you watch his lines, a little bit like Tony. He's a little tighter. See how much tighter he is than everybody else? And he kind of, that's kind of how Corey's been riding. That's what I was surprised yesterday to see him get caught yeah. out by Escalante. But great battle right now. Bryce Prince doing a good job here at the front of this group. You're referring to Tony Elias, of course, the Suzuki factory rider in the Motul Superbike class and how he likes to take lines. And one thing we know about Corey West, having been around the sport as long as you and I have, is that one of the things that he feels is his strong suit is on the brakes. Yep. And, I mean, we, we've seen it at places like Road Atlanta in years past where he would love to go into turn 10, one of the hardest braking zones we have on the entire Moto America circuit, and completely throw it sideways. Corey West, very comfortable when it comes to grabbing that brake lever. J.D. Beach. Insane how fast he's going, Greg. 26-3 <laughs> the last lap. He's gone 26-2, 26-2, 26-3. So this is kind of what I feel J.D.'s got to try to do to put himself in a there go. Corey's going up underneath his teammate Nick McFadden right now down in turn one. But this is kind of you know what we expected from J.D. this year is to try to separate himself from most of these guys. And Hayden has been able to stay with him at Road Atlanta and uh, even a little bit yesterday. But today... You can just tell right off the bat, JD's at another level, almost a three second lead after four laps. 16 to go in this one. If you're just joining us, we're at Virginia International Raceway here in Alton, Virginia. Race number two, round number three of the championship for 2018. It's the championship of Virginia. We're watching the battle for third spot as JD Beach has set sail with Hayden Gillum in tow about three seconds. So now it's number 74, Bryce Prince, and he has number 36, Corey West, on his tail. Corey's teammate, M4 MedAge Suzuki's Nick McFadden, who started on the front row in sixth place. And you have Richie Escalante, Anthony Maziato, Braden Ort, all in the mix. Ort on the red and white motorcycle. He's the last one in that freight train. And then there's a bit of a gap back to Miles Thornton, JC Camacho, Jason Aguilar. Yeah, and Braden, Braden's made a couple mistakes early in this race, but it kind of just goes to show the raw speed that he has because he's been able to pull himself back up to the back of those guys. Like you said, Greg, Escalante right now looks like he's trying to make a move around the outside of McFadden as they come down the front straightaway. So, the, you know, your, your podium guy from yesterday, and Nick's going to go fire right back up underneath him as they go down into turn one. But Braden looks like he got around Maziato also. Question is, does Corey West have the pace to chase down Bryce Prince? We know that when Bryce gets out of that final corner on the racetrack, turn 13 and heads down that straightaway, he's got a lot of good oomph when he twists the grip. Corey West. I feel like Corey comes good halfway from the race on. Like nah, you he said, talks, he's talked about yeah, that. Yeah, and I think you said it earlier where you said that he's in a much better spot than he was in yesterday, and I agree with you. And I think that come half race distance and moving forward, Corey's pace doesn't really 
doesn't really uh, it doesn't slow down at all. If anything goes faster, and look at Maziato and Ort going up through turn seven side <laughs> by side with each other. Yeah. So those two guys getting racy at the back of this little group. Don't want to don't want to get in each other's way too early. It's yep. just six lap six of twenty. You don't want to create that gap. You can see there's a little gap now between Escalante and Anthony there. So they'll pull that back in pretty quickly. Maziato the third out of New Jersey on the YCRS Triangle Cycles motorcycle. He's the number sixty one. As we take a look at this replay, look at the middle part of your screen. The thing is, is it's off camber and you can't see the uh, the exit. And those guys just just a little elbow to knee there between those two guys, no big deal. And uh, they'll just keep going forward. On the front straightaway with 14 laps to go, the battle for third. Corey West on the 36, M4X star Suzuki leads the way. And it's the 54 of Richie Escalante. Moving in, so this battle is as tight as you like it, although Corey looks a little closer to Bryce Princeton. He was the last time around. I think, Jason, you're right. You know, Corey's talked to me about it. He said one of the things he noticed yesterday is as they got deep in the race and the tires started to wear out, he saw the riders in front of him every now and then. The foot would come off the peg yeah. and the bike would move around, and he just felt mentally that he had an advantage because he does feel that he gets stronger and stronger as the race wears on. That's right. And I think, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see if he could get by Bryce and see if he could lay down a lap. Escalante is the danger man to me only because he's he's been so fast all weekend. And it looks like it's pretty easy for him to just kind of hang out in this group and stay there. And he's got the ability to draft. But when you launch down when they go into turn one, Corey's so good on the brakes that Richie's going to have to do something really early down the straightaway. As he goes into turn 10, not quite close enough. That's where he was able to get by Corey and surprise him yesterday. But uh, I think Richie's got some pace as well. So in the setup yesterday's motorcycle, Corey was talking about trusting that front tire and the amount of time he has on Dunlops. And when we looked at the highlights, we saw that door was open on that last lap for Escalante. Mm -hmm. And Corey told me that's because when he would go take that tight defensive line, he had lost the front a couple of times, and he just didn't have the confidence. He felt if he went on that last lap on that defensive line that he would have crashed. So he left the door a little open, and he was surprised to see Escalante go by him. But it kind of looks that last time we saw uh, Corey West that they might have solved that problem. Yeah, and I think uh, as, we, as, they, as I look on our screen, it looks like Escalante did make the pass. This guy's cruising along, still doing 26s, but watching his friend up ahead, just kind of keeping the gap at 3.2 seconds right now is J.D. Beach. Just just kind of probably watching his pit board. J.D.'s just did the slowest lap of his race, the 26.6. Get a look at John Ethel there. Uh, been around in the paddock for a while, but here's Bryce Prince, and you can see Escalante did get by Corey, but he did it really early, like I said, Greg. He got by him before the little kink. So it made it harder for Corey to do anything with him. Braden Orton now has got by McFadden as well. So Braden has moved himself um, past Anthony Maziato, and he's moved himself by Nick in that one lap that we've seen. But Escalante, I said, looks like the danger man. It looked like he has a little bit of pace. So let's see if he tries to do anything with Bryce. He's go as he come up into turn 10. Nope, Bryce is a little bit later. But, but Richie's really good down through this section and out of the last corner. And if there's a great turn to be really good at, it's definitely that one coming out of that last turn. You can see he's going to draw up on it. He opens up the arc, turns just a little bit more, and he's so fast through here. And he's probably going to get by Bryce, probably draft by Bryce here pretty early as well. Escalante 54, that silver motorcycle swings wide, and there goes Bryce Prince behind him. So since Bryce took over that third place spot, that's the first challenge we've seen. Corey West, is he going to try to do it? Under braking, he's got one. It's a wow. great move. It's a good move. Because, you know, when you see somebody get past, you're, if you're the second or third rider back, you want to attack that same person immediately. And that's exactly what Corey did. And he probably feels, uh, he's probably seen a little bit something here out of Richie that Richie's got that pace that, um, that I've been talking about and wants to go with Escalante. So the same two guys that were fighting out for the podium yesterday have now put themselves in that position, third and fourth. But Braden North's going to have something to say about this as well because I've seen him come back from a little bit further back as well. And so he's got to try to see if he can do something with Bryce here shortly and not let these two guys get away. So 28-1 that last lap was Escalante's fastest lap of his race. 28-6 uh, for Corey. But you can see, Greg, Escalante's just trying his best to draw away from these guys. Corey West desperate to keep him in sight because you know, he alluded to it at the top of the show when we were talking to, to when he was talking to Hannah. You know, here you have Richie Escalante, young gun who's coming back from injury and he's back in the flow of things. 
and you have Corey West, who has been around racing a long time. He's a veteran. He didn't even know he was going to be in this position just a few weeks ago, but with, with the injury to M4 X-Star Suzuki's Valentin DeBees, a star in this series, Corey West gets chucked in this position, and he kind of alluded to it, Jason. This could be the last time that he ever races in Moto America, and he wants to stand on the podium. We don't know what's going to happen with Valentin DeBees. We have a couple-week break. As the number 30 Ort is trying to make a move, and he goes by Bryce Prince. Yeah. So the Canadian will take over fifth spot for the moment. Yep. But that's the situation is you have you know, this young rider who's come back, taste the podium, and Corey West who's just so desperate to score the maximum amount of points. Yeah, well, what, we, what we tend to forget is you know, when guys aren't in the series for a year or two, I wouldn't say that you forget about him, but you kind of forget about him. And Richie Escalante has <laughs> won races in this paddock, many races in this paddock in Superstock. So he's not afraid to go out and win races. He's not afraid to, to ride with anybody. And, and uh, when I heard that he was coming back this year with this new team, I was excited for him and, and, and the team themselves. I feel like they've gotten themselves a very good rider. And, uh, but now we're going to see that last lap, 28-2, 28-3 for, Corey, uh, for Richie and Corey. Uh, Braden Ort has done 28 flat, so he has shown pace. Nick McFadden did his fastest lap of the, of the race on his last lap at a 28.4. So, again, it's just, oh, there, there you go. There goes Ort underneath Corey going up into turn 10. How did he make that stick? Yeah, he's strong on the brakes. And, you know, yesterday we saw Braden just kind of go backwards a little bit the last five or six laps of the race. So, you know, as we're a little bit over half, this is halfway point of the race, uh, these two guys right here definitely have some pace to see if, Braden can do anything with with Escalante. He's trying to draft him right now. He came up on him, I think, a little bit surprised in a hurry. So Braden Ort, tune racing machine. He got by Richie Escalante. Escalante trying to take that long way around on the brakes, but Ort will take over third spot. So the Quicksilver Lexan Moto Hudson Motorcycles rider Richie Escalante has got it all to do again if he wants to get himself with a clean line in front of his eyes, but it's Braden Ort right now who leads the way. What a freight train of riders as these six are all trying to duke it out for the final spot on the podium. J.D. Beach, 3.7 seconds ahead of Hayden Gillum, who is 15 and a half seconds ahead of this battle. All right, so in the mix, we have Braden Ort, number 30. Number 54, Richie Escalante. Number 36, Corey West. There goes Nick. Nick, Nick just goes underneath Bryce Prince right there. Yeah. See that? And look at Bryce looks back. Now he's going to get get caught up with Maziata. So, unfortunately, the, the early pace that Bryce had has kind of faltered now, and he's at the back of this group. This group's kind of gone through him. So the 60 helmets, KWR rider, Bryce Prince, who looked like he was really strong in third spot, has shuffled himself back into that eighth place position just like that. Braden just a just little bit. He just, just missed his, his timing there a little bit coming down the hill, Greg. You see he went through that left-hander just a little bit faster and made that right a little bit sharper. So we'll see if these guys can draft up on him as they come across the line. Corey West right behind Escalante. Wouldn't be surprised to see him try something down the end of the straightaway on Escalante. And, uh, you know, oh, is he going to try both of them? No, no just the one. So <laughs> great move by Corey. So he's got a lot of confidence there on the brakes to be able to do that. He might not quite have the legs of the two bikes in front of him down the straight. You know, this right there, he kind of got a double draft and was able to get close. But uh, but Braden's pulling him along now. Nick just did again his quickest lap, 28-3. So McFadden is going nowhere either. They, this group has managed to kind of get through by, and by Bryce and stay together. We're starting to get to that part point of the race, that stretch of the race. As you can see, Glidewell crashed out, number 44. Starting to get to that point. There's, there's a look at uh, Gillis Glidewell. So he is off the racetrack. But what I'm trying to say is nine laps to go in this one. Oh, well, Bryce a little Bryce, wide again. a little wide so. again. So where uh, this is going to start favoring mentally at least Corey West because, you know, we've talked about it. He feels that towards the latter stage of this race, he is really strong. There's a look at the lead. Hayden, Hayden's on his fastest lap of the race right now. Hayden is. So at, according to our screens, he's green all the way across. Let's see what kind of time he does. He does 26.7. So he pulled three tenths back. He's 3.6 behind uh, JD. And a lot of JD's advantage came right off the bat. 26.2, 26.2, 26.3. I mean, a 28.7 from a standing start, I can't tell you enough how fast that is right from a standing start. So the thing is, is that JD put a lot of his advantage in those first four or five laps. And that's a really good thing for those of you at home that are doing some club racing and that kind of thing. 
how important those first two or three laps are, especially when those races that a lot of people do at home are a little bit shorter races. You can see what it's done for J.D. Beach today, being able to pull out three seconds like within the first three or four laps. Let's see who this is, Greg. Is that Hayden Gillum? Is it? Is it Hayden Gillum? It looks like, it's like I feel like it is Hayden Gillum, Greg. He's oh, buried. Oh, no. That's turn four. That's turn four. He had just done the fastest lap of his race, and it looks like he's just buried it underneath the, the barriers there in turn four. So that's that's the first mistake, really, we've seen from Hayden all year oh, long. Oh, that is sad. That's a bomber. Ridiculous racing from Phil Pot, Kentucky. Hayden Gillum, number 69. He is out of this race as his championship rival, J.D. Beach, sails off into the sunset. Yeah, that's just getting into turn four, a little hot, probably dragging the front brake ever so slightly. And, uh, you know, all through practice stuff, I've watched him in that section. He's been amazing to watch, to be honest with you. But he obviously was feeling really good on the bike, running 26-7 his last lap, personal best. Now, now there's two spots for grabs in this group here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from the last time we saw it, it's still Braden Ort leading the way. Corey West and Escalante, Nick McFadden going with him. Let's see if Nick can keep that tire underneath him today a little bit better. And, uh, and you can't count out Maziato. He's right there with these guys as well. Seven laps to go in this one. Corey West could fall victim to Richie Escalante, but Escalante can only go on the outside where Corey West puts himself on the racetrack. And, and that's really heady by Corey West to do what he's doing there. He's not going to allow somebody to go up underneath him. Even if they're able to draft and, and, and get up alongside of him, he's not going to allow them to just position themselves right up underneath him. He's going to move the bike over to the right. He knows how good he is on the brakes. And if you're going to go by him, you're going to have to do it the hard way. You're going to have to go on the outside of him. Braden Ort, number 30, on the tuned racing Yamaha from Calgary, Canada. Leads the way from Arkansas's Corey West, M4X star Suzuki. And then there's Richie Escalante from Mexico, the number 54 motorcycle. There goes Corey. Yep. Can he hold that nice and tight? Really good. Beautiful move from the veteran racer, Corey West. Now, let's see. This, these are the late stages of the race where Corey thinks he has an advantage over everyone. Yeah, you can see they're oh, going to fire right back out. Aggressive. Corey's a little bit, uh, coming out of that right-hander, it's a little hard. It seems like it just doesn't kind of get the drive he wants. It could be a gearing thing. And watch how fast he is down here, though, Greg. Yesterday, coming down this hill, that is such Whoa. a big, big move to try right there from Corey. But he's really good coming down that hill. Now, he wants to try to get in the draft as good as he can. But Escalante is going to actually get a double draft, probably draft by on the left. You and can see where they're at. And lap traffic coming up too, Jason. Yep. And sometimes lap traffic is going to move to the inside of the racetrack, which could be Corey West's line. This is all Corey right here. This is th this is where he shines. You can see him make, getting ready to make that pass. He sees the back marker. He's in a bit deep. Oh, first time. First time he's done that. Well, yeah. First time we've seen anyway that he's that he's deep in there. Yep. Back lap marker traffic, was, get out of the way. Yep. Did, did a good job there. So the key for Corey at this point is, if you do that, not to lose another position or two, especially with six laps remaining in this race. It's the battle for second spot on the racetrack. Braden Ort leads the way. He's on the 30, that red and white motorcycle. And Corey West, number 36, in second spot with Richie Escalante. That was our battle for the podium yesterday between those two riders. And then you have Nick McFadden hanging mm. around. Man, Corey's good into here. He's just so good. He's got so much confidence. He's going to be able to stand that bike upright, probably pinch Braden off. Yep, just a little bit there. It's a great move. And having that in your arsenal and knowing that you can just kind of throw the bike underneath. Now, this next right-hander is where I'm a little bit concerned because it just doesn't look like he gets off of that corner as well. You can see those guys are able to turn it up underneath him and get off there. But he ran it in there deep that time, Beautiful. Greg. And that's kind of what he needed to do because he's fast down this hill. Let's see how big of a gap he can pull coming down this hill. And that showed me, Jason, that it looks like that M4X Star Suzuki team fixed the problem with the front end, meaning his confidence in the front end of that motorcycle. That was a key move as we get late in this race, that last lap, if he can fend off the charges of these riders. So Corey West now leads the way onto the straightaway. And what a great job by our, court, by our crew there. You can see that if Corey was, he was trying to make these guys go down around the outside of him, but Braden is just really, really hungry. It goes Nick McFadden, Nick's now going to be part of this group as far oh. as he gets himself in there. He might be even learning from his teammate and seeing what his teammate's doing because he slides himself underneath uh, Escalante. All the while, Anthony is just sitting there kind of watching what's going on. He realizes he's still got four or five laps left, but he's not done with this crew yet either. Yeah, there's a group behind them that's starting to catch him with all this duking out that's going on in the racetrack. There's Camacho and Aguilar and Miles Thornton and Michael Gilbert all back there in the frame as well. All the while, J.D. Beach 
has set sail 26.4 seconds ahead of this battle for second spot. This is where Corey West shines into turn number seven. Nice, tidy line. And Corey West makes it work for him. Brayden Ort has got a lot of trust in Corey West, trying to go around the outside of him. But this time, can Corey get off of that corner you're talking to, that 9C that takes you up to turn 10? All right, so this time he held it a little tighter. You see what he did there? He made an adjustment. So again, if you're going to go by him, you got to go around the outside of him. That's exactly what Ort just did. He just rode around the outside of Corey. Corey's going to turn it back up underneath him. So, you know, that's that's when you start racing against a guy who's been around a while like Corey, a veteran. He's going to be able to no see panic. what's going on in front yep. of him. Yep, not panic too much. And uh, Braden did an amazing job there to go around the outside. And that's probably, it's another part of the track that they fixed here. And it's good to see so much close side-by-side -side racing up there. So much grip on the front end of these motorcycles to Look make at these this, big Greg. moves. They're going for triple drafts down the front straightaway into turn number one. Who is going to be the mm. demon on the brakes? Oh, oh there's Escalante oh. running a little bit wide. And that's what can happen. But he, and you can see now, Maziato moves up a spot. And yep. just behind these guys, Greg, we haven't talked about it. J.C. Camacho has, cl has closed up on this group and brought Aguilar with him and Bryce Prince. They're all there together. See that group back there? Yeah. They've been chipping away. So now we're going to have, what, eight guys, nine guys? Eight guys up there for this battle for second. Ooh. And Maziato underneath Escalante in turn one has been able to hold that position. It's frantic stuff going on in the racetrack as you try to keep it all sorted out. Number 30 is Braden Ort. Number 36 there is Corey West. 61, Maziato. So you could see into turn number one. Braden Ort got in there deep. He sucked Corey West in with him. And they almost had disaster. So now Corey West, does he have the pace to get those couple of bike lengths back? Or is Braden Ort now decided, I've got a clear track in front of me. It's time to pull the pin and get moving here. Well, the hard thing is, is that you know, somebody like Escalante, who's just gotten kind of bumped back now to fifth, uh, he's got to try to go by these guys. But Maziato is in a good spot now to try to draft these two Suzukis in front of him. So let's see what kind of horsepower he's got to try to be able to do that. And you can see Corey had a little look over his shoulder. Nick's on to the left-hand side of him here as they come across our finish line. That's going the long way around. It's going to be hard for Nick to pass him going down into one from that position. And you can see Corey's able to hold that position. They close back up on Braden a little bit. This is the section where they got to try to try to keep Braden honest and keep up behind him as close as they can. Braden probably doesn't know that he's got this couple bike lengths lead. But interesting to see what he does as we come up into turn number seven. Here's another look at what happened in turn number one two laps ago. You can see the front there. Corey was in deep trying to go around the outside, just couldn't do it. Little, little, little wave, wave yeah. yeah, yeah. And these guys are racing close. I mean, they've, 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 I've seen nothing but uh, but good, good tight racing amongst all of these guys. Or continues to leave the door open. Yeah, but you know he's got that little bit of a gap. You can see he's run wide up through there a few times. He's a little bit wide there, and that's you know he's just pushing, Greg. He's just trying he to get away. That's he what is. you're doing. And for the pace they're running, Jason, I think Braden Moore is, is probably the most loose motorcycle we have out in this group. Yep, it's definitely moving around. Of course, two laps to go in this one. Does Braden Ort have the tires or anything? There's a look at J.D. Beach, our leader. Just gone. Yep, yep. absolutely gone. Doing, uh, he's doing 28s as well now. But oh, last time by it was 28 second lead, and it's, it, the rest of the field hasn't even crossed the stripe yet. Yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big gap there. As we wait for those riders of so J.D. Beach. As the riders now coming across the stripe in just a moment. So for J.D., 28 seconds. Nick McFadden, Anthony Maziato just pulled their personal best laps of the race so oh. far. Oh. Lap traffic in the way. Yep. Great here we North. Go. What's going to happen here? So, uh, or did not make the, the, the right no. decision. Well, you know, it wasn't so much he didn't make the right decision, Greg. It's you, you get in those spots, and he's still trying to go underneath Corey. You know, Braden's really aggressive. I like it. I like seeing him. He's yeah, got a lot Jay, of bike control. He had so much lean angle. He yep. lost the front look there at Corey. for a second. Corey going right back after him, going into turn four. And that's, there you go. That's, Beautiful. That's what you got to do. You got it. They're in that spot. Nick McFadden jumping on it. Like I said, Greg, when you see that guy get past, you want to jump on him right away. And immediately, Braden's just had a little bit of a shakeup. He's got Escalante now that's probably going to try to do something with him as they go into turn seven. Not quite close enough. But it wasn't so much that Braden made a mistake in turn one. I think he was waiting to see if the back marker was actually going to move out of the way or not. And it was just a simple little mistake is all it was. M4 X-Star Suzuki leads away from M4 MedAge Suzuki. This would be quite a coup for that M4 team, Team Hammer, if they can have two of their riders standing on the podium with this guy absolutely checking out on the final lap, J.D. Beach. 
takes the white flag as we go back to the battle for second yep, and spot. Look what, and look what happened. Look who's already up behind third again. Look who's up behind Corey West. Braden North's going nowhere in this battle for second. And uh, he's proven that he can make a couple little errors. But he's going to try to go down. Watch Corey move over to the right. He's going to move over to the right. And he's going to try to make Braden go around the outside of him like he's doing now. Now Nick McFadden's in a double draft coming down that straightaway. Corey's got to keep it over to the right just a little bit. But Braden's going to go by him. Now, is he in too deep? Is he going to be able to get it turned? He's got it turned, Greg. No problem. So these two guys are going to hash up. Both of them are in a little bit wide. They both drew each other in just a little bit, but were able to get the bikes turned. So that was the white flag as J.D. Beach is 29 seconds ahead of this battle for second spot. It's Braden Ort on the 30. Corey West, and anything can happen on this final lap. And there's Richie Escalante hanging back there and Anthony Maziato that could definitely mop up if anything goes wrong with these riders. This is the spot we're coming up to. Is Corey going to make the move? It, it, this is where Braden really should have the door closed, but he's opened it up again. Like you said, Greg, he's opened that door up again. And let's see what happens. They get to the top of the hill here. Braden's a little bit out of shape, but he gets the bike turned. Wow. Gets it through. Now, it's going to be Corey's turn to see if he can do anything going into turn 10. I really feel like Nick isn't going to do anything too dastardly. As J.D. Beach comes across the line with an absolute dominant win here for J.D. Beach. So, J.D. comes across the line. Now, we're just waiting for this big battle. Brayton has, Brayden rather, has held on to second coming down the hill. Corey West third. And I just don't know if Corey's going to have the power to get by. And he's going to have to worry about his teammate now getting drawn into a double draft. Two podiums available in this one. Second and third spot. Here we go to the line. It's Braden Ort. But can Nick McFadden take it away from Corey? He doesn't. So it's J.D. Beach, Braden Ort, and Corey West. What a Nick great McFadden race. in fourth. What an incredible race we had for second place after an earlier exit from Hayden Gillum, who had that spot wrapped up. Hayden pushing, trying to close the gap on the leader, and he threw it down the road. But for this guy on that Monster Energy Yamaha Extended Services, Yamalu Graves Yamaha, J.D. Beach, your championship points leader, and heartbreak in the championship as it was five points. If Hayden Gillum could have kept it on two wheels, it would have been a 10-point advantage. But with Hayden's early exit out of this race, J.D. Beach will extend his lead to 30 points over Hayden Gillum. 25 available for that win. And how about this guy? Could this be the coming out party for Braden Nord for the rest of the season as the Tuned Racing Yamaha and their, that crew down there, Mike Pond and the whole crew, Man, yep. doing a great job. And Ort, I mean, he's going to go back and look at that race, and I think he's got to say to himself, uh, how did I get away with that one? How yeah. did I get away with the front end losing here and the rear end losing there? And this was two laps to go. And Braden, and it, it again, it was he was trying to get his rhythm back, and it's very difficult because now he's a little bit too tight going into this right, and you can see Nick is already behind him trying to square him up, and uh, does a great job of doing that. But Braden kept his cool and did such a good job as they went into turn one on the very last lap. He was able to take that position. Both of these two guys that we're looking at on our screen right now were both in a little bit deep because you'll see Nick's a little bit tighter than them, but they were able to square the corner up and get off of it. And I thought Nick was actually going to get Corey, but you can see right here he just let, has to let up just a little bit. Yeah. It's so hard, Greg, to try to go around the outside of people at that kink wide open in sixth gear. It's, it's, You'd it, be, there's, a, there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on, and you'd be amazed at how small the track feels, like how small it, 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 it narrows. It narrow. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't, but, but it with feels that kink, like it. it does. And there's not a lot of room out there because as you're bending it over for the kink, you're looking at nothing but grass on the left side. So Corey Nick, West. <laughs> him and Nick are talking right now like, who got it? I'm not really sure who got it. So that's what they're uh, they're gesturing back and forth to each other right now. But this guy's going to keep his spot. Not only is he going to keep his spot in third, but he's going to make a big jump up towards Hayden, towards second now. Yeah, so for third position, it'll be 16 points total. So he'll get 16 back on Hayden Gillum. That'll basically have the gap for uh, Corey West. So it should keep him in a very solid third place position as Braid Nort was in eighth with a total of 22 points coming into this one and he'll get 20. So we'll take a look at it as we take a look at those results. So it is J.D. Beach, Braid Nort, the Canadian, Corey West out of Arkansas, Nick McFadden, Richie Escalante, Anthony Maziato, Jason Aguilar in seventh, Bryce Prince, Miles Thornton, Michael Gilbert with a top 10 after coming back from a head injury. And Lucas Silva, Yates, Smith, Giannato, and Cox, your top 15.
All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to find out from J.D. Beach how his race went, and I can't wait to talk to Braden Ort and Corey West. Stay with us. One thing you definitely don't want to see if you're Hayden Gillum and his team for the championship is the number 69 motorcycle exiting the racetrack in the back of a truck. Jason, here's what happened. Yeah, like we, we didn't get the, the beginning of it, but it looked like Layden, Hayden just lost the front. And, uh, you know, it's a bummer. The guy's pushing. He's trying to win a race. He's trying to keep JD honest. And uh, it's just a mistake, and it, and it happens to all of us. That was one of the tales. Many, many tales come out of this race number two for Supersport here at Moto America as Hayden Gillum was trying to get his motorcycle out of the air fence. But really uh, a sad thing to see, especially because we have such a long break before we get to Road America, and Hayden's going to be thinking about that one, no question about it. But we have, of course, a victory circle full of motorcycles because J.D. Beach won this one by 28.0 seconds. Braid Nort from Canada was third and Corey, or second, and Corey West in third. And I hear Hannah is ready to give us the story of what happened. Yeah, I've got Corey down here. Corey, you just mentioned to me that was a pretty stressful race. Braden was not letting up. Tell us about your battle. Yeah, that was tough. I mean, I got a much better start than I did yesterday. It was in about P4 or 5 there at the beginning. And then uh, I worked my way up a little sooner than last time. And um, But, man, the kids were on me today. I had to work for it though, every lap. And... Uh, Braden rode fantastic. Uh, I did see uh, Hayden go down there, and I knew we were battling for second and third then, so um, I just tried to keep my passes clean, but that kid just kept passing me from every angle. So it made it tough, but uh, Team uh, M4X Star Suzuki, they gave me a phenomenal bike. Uh, Frank, the boys, just working awesome for me, and this is really fun. I mean, I'm a sub rider, and that's two podiums now. We're sitting third in the championship, so don't make me go home. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Oh, we want like to keep it, racing. Oh, yeah, we we got to get Corey. Uh, it looks like he got the suit right off the off the rack. So we got to get him a more permanent suit so he can stay around for the year. Yeah, I'm sure that Team Hammer and the principals down there, Christian John, are scratching their heads, thinking to themselves, "Hmm, what do we do now?" Because we know Valentin DeBees wants to get back here as soon as possible. Let's get back down to Hannah. I'm here with our second place finisher, Braden Ort. Braden, first Super Smart podium of your career. Tell us about your battle with Corey. Um, it was it was ridiculous. It was by far my best race ever. Um, so I'm super happy with that. Uh, I got beat out of uh, third place yesterday. So I was working so so hard to be up in uh, up in a podium contention today. And making it a second place is just that much better. And um, there's a few dicey passes in there, but uh, I'm not even sure if we might have hit once or twice. But I made sure to say sorry. And um, sorry, Corey, by the way. But it was a ridiculous race. I'm super happy to uh, to have come out on top of that. And yeah, overall, just couldn't be happy with how, how today's gone. You were making some pretty risky passes there. What goes through your mind when you're trying to attempt something like that, if it had failed or...? Um, well, if it had failed, I, been, uh, I wouldn't have been here right now. I would have been on the ground out there. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really fine limit of where that's at. And, and I, I gambled it a few times, but it worked out in the end. So I've got to thank my team for the amazing setup today. And uh, everything panned out really nicely. Well, congratulations. Thank you. If you ever see Braden just rolling around the pits, he's the nicest guy you oh, ever yeah. met in your life, yeah, ever. Yeah. But he's savage on the track, and there was nothing today that he did wrong. He rode hard. He rode clean. The only mistakes that – the only people he cost was himself a little bit, the mistakes that he made. He yeah. didn't take anybody or do anything wrong. And uh, what a tremendous second place for him, Mike Pond, and the whole Toon team. Typical Canadian style. He just sent it. Yeah, he, he did. sent it. He, he did, did a great it. job today. Great, great job. By leading that charge and taking that fight to second place – a great battle and a great second place finish. Let's go down to our race winner, J.D. Beach, who dominated the weekend. Go ahead, Hannah. J.D., another race win for you this weekend. Did you feel a little less pressure when you saw that Hayden had crashed out of the race? Yeah, you know what? It, it, was, uh, it, it was definitely a tough race. I, I know I had a little bit of a gap on Hayden at, uh, at the beginning, but me and I was having to ride hard to keep that gap. And uh, me, I, I just got to get, I just got to give it up to my whole Yamaha Extended Service Monster Energy Graves team. I mean, they gave, they gave me a great bike today, and uh, it, it was awesome. And, I mean, I, I got to thank the uh, Rick Nicholas guys and 
handheld for all the help they've given me. And uh, yeah, and I mean, I love Hayden, and like, I mean, he, he's made me a, be, a better rider for sure. I mean, we, I, mean I, I did a 26 1 out there. I mean, that, 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 that's quick on, on a 600, and it, it, it was just because he was pushing me so hard. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I hate to see him fall, but I mean, I, I know he's gonna be quick uh, for the rest of the season. So, uh, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to the, uh, the battle, and uh, we'll go into the next round and keep pushing. Congratulations, thank you, JD. Yeah, 26-1, so quick, fast. It's quick on a six-one. That's ripping. Yeah, and, absolute and ripping. I can't get over the 28. The start, two, only two seconds difference from a standing start is really fast, and uh, I think that. When you go back as a as a crew as a crew chief to your rider, you know you, you got to say that's that's where we won the race right off the bat, right off the line. So JD Beach in a dominating performance, did it in fine style. His championship rival Hayden Gillum was on the podium, but he made the best of his great start and put the hammer down to lead this one flag to flag. A look at the point standings: Hayden Gillum will drift back 30 points in this championship. Corey West. 11 points ahead of Braid Nort. So it's a solid third for the M4X star Suzuki rider. Orton fourth, Nick McFadden in fifth spot. Maziato, Escalante, Ashton Yates still hanging around there in the top 10. Bryce Prince in ninth. As we look back through this field, Jason, what are some of your takeaways from Supersport here as we get into the, the meat of the season and, uh, you know, we get this beautiful VIR natural road course handled on Supersport? Well, I think the thing I'm going to take away is we saw both our championship leaders make mistakes this weekend. JD in qualifying, Hayden in the race. Uh, I think we've seen Corey West obviously continue to, to show his push towards wanting to stay in the paddock and keep third. And Braden Orr, I mean, what can you say about him today? He <laughs> rode amazing all day today. Uh, he's ridden well all last year. Um, so I think that he's going to be a young guy to really look for. All right, as the podium celebration start for the Super Sport class, we'll continue our coverage on BN Sports from Virginia International Raceway. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 